Hi, everybody. I'm Mr. Wildcat, and I hope you all having a wonderful start to your 2023. Welcome back to another one of my fantastic reviews. Now, today, we're going to be doing things a little bit differently than what I'm usually used to doing. You usually see me reviewing Married Children. You used to see me doing a little bit of Seinfeld or even some food and beverage reviews. But today, we're going to be looking down a different avenue. Okay, We're going to be doing an actual movie review. Okay? Now, I'm the kind of person that rarely watches movies that were made within the last 20 years. But today, we're going to look at something that, all right, that's usually not, it's not in the frame that I'm used to watching, but it's something that has actually sparked my interest. It is something that I can definitely relate to, all right? Because it actually, um, I've actually worked in this type of field for the last 13 plus years and counting, all right? Today, we're going to be looking at the 2006 comedy, Employee of the Month, starring Dane Cook, Dex Shepard, and Jessica Simpson in the lead roles, all right? Now, this is filmed in a fictional um, business called Super Club, which is the same business module that a, of a Sam's Club or Costco. Okay, and I'm pretty sure a wide number of you out there have either heard, you probably have heard of at least one or the other, and if if not, have shopped at at least one of these two. But in case you haven't, probably have to go a little bit into what um, warehouse club and what what the warehouse club module usually is. All right, so usually. Um, First of all, you have to have a membership in order to purchase anything within these warehouse clubs. All right. We know this there's both Sam's Club and Costco, they both offer two different types of membership. A basic one, which is gets you in the door, and which um, it starts at it starts at fifty dollars for Sam's Club and sixty for Costco. Okay. And then there's also a upper level membership, which gives you additional benefits. Okay, um, Sam's Club offers it at $110, in which it lets you in at eight o'clock in the morning, Monday through Saturday. You get Sam's Cash, which is two percent cash back on everything you spend throughout the year, excluding certain items. Free shipping on online orders. Free curbside pickup if you uh, choose to do curbside pickup. That is free to use. You get extra discounts at optical and pharmacy as well. And you also you receive some additional benefits along the way. Um, Costco, on the other hand. Okay, give me one moment while I go look this up. I usually, I don't shop at Costco. So let's uh, take a look at what they have to offer, okay? So, membership right here, okay. So Sam's Club calls their upper level membership the plus. Costco calls it the executive membership. Okay. And that gives you extra benefits. So what does this so let's uh, go through what Costco Executive has for you to offer. So first is a, a reward uh let's see. So basically Costco's their uh, executive membership is a little bit more expensive than the Sam's Plus, okay? Sam's Plus is 110, Costco's executive is 120, okay? But let's take a look at um basically uh let's see. Let's take a look at the different benefits that the executive has to already offer. I don't shop at Costco, so I would not really know what. Um, so basically, one their biggest, uh, basically Costco's biggest benefit. Oh, here we go. Is the rewards okay? Sam's Club offers two percent cash back up to five hundred dollars. Costco offers two percent cash back on purchases up to a thousand. All right, and you also get additional benefits and discounts on a wide variety of Costco services. You get to um, see shop. Uh, 
we get the same benefits of basic, basic which is shop both online and in the warehouses. So they don't get the early hours that Sam's Club has. They don't get free shipping. And from what I'm seeing here, they don't get free curbside, which is what Sam's Club has to offer. Like, So Sam's Club, they offer a wide variety of additional stuff. All right. And then on top of that, both Sam's Club and Costco, they each offer their own respective credit cards. All right. So over on Costco, they only take one credit card, and that's Visa. And it happens to be the one card that they actually carry. Okay. The one they have their own Visa card that they try to push on everybody. So with Costco's Visa card, 4% cash back on eligible gas and electric vehicle purchase um, on gasoline and electrical charges, 3% on restaurant and eligible travel, 2% cash back on Costco and Costco.com, and 1% everything else. All right. Sam's Club, on the other hand, they offer a MasterCard, but they take all four major credit cards as a whole. Okay, used to be they only took Discover, which is, happens to be the card that they um, had pushed at first. Then they also, and then they brought out a Master. They changed from Discover to MasterCard, in which at that point they started accepting both MasterCard and Discover in the process. And then when Costco, they changed their main credit. They used to, Costco used to be American Express. When they changed from American Express over the Visa, it pissed off a lot of the American Express cardholders. And Sam's Club decided to cash in on it by accepting American Express. And then, of course, when, Sam's, when Costco first rolled out the Visa card, they were having a little bit of issues with it. So Sam's Club cashed in on it by taking Visa credit as well. They both take debit cards as well they take cash as well and they also take food stamps from what i'm understanding as well so a wide variety it's um each business is particularly the same they just offer like they're the same as a whole but they offer different benefits they offer different services okay but uh, that's a little go a little bit into like what it's like to buy in bulk all right because that's what this super club is all about so, you were to go into like Walmart or Target or your local grocery store. You would want to buy you want to buy some tuna fish. Well, you know, buy them in these nice little cans. Okay, probably buy a dollar anywhere from like a dollar fifty, three dollars a can or something like that. Go to Sam's Club or Costco. Buy a whole case of eight of these for about eleven dollars. All right. In the long term, like you buy the about eight of these for eleven dollars versus two to three dollars at least for this tiny little can, you're getting a better bargain by going this route versus this. Okay. We'll put this down here. And there's another example. I'll there's another example I'll show you. Macaroni and cheese. All right. You go into like your local grocery store. You'll buy a box like this for like probably a dollar to a dollar fifty a box, something like that. All right. Go to a Sam's Club or Costco. Purchase. A whole box of eight, you buy 18 boxes of macaroni and cheese for less than $10, okay? What do you think you're going to go for, right? You're going to go for this, because buying bulk is your God-given right, or at least that's the super club way. <laughs> so now that you guys understand what the um, business module is like for... Um, the warehouse clubs, Sam's Club and Costco. Now, we don't know how much a membership costs to shop a super club, and we don't know what kind of credit cards that they promote and stuff because they don't even mention this stuff. All right. So, um, why don't we go ahead and kick in? 
because we have a lot to cover. So you know, now understand exactly what the um, business module is for a warehouse club. So that will fully get you a better understanding of what to expect. So we start off. And be, oh, another one, one more thing. I will, one more demonstration. I will get a can of Dr Pepper. All right. Go into like Walmart or your local grocery store. You'll buy. Um, a pack, a box of 12 for like six, seven dollars a box. You go into Sam's Club, you buy this for 50, you buy like a whole, like 30, a case of 36 of these cans for like 15, 16 dollars. What are you going to go for? The small 12 case or the full 36? Okay. So, um, we kick into the episode basically, um, we have Dane Cook, who plays Zach Bradley. Okay, Zach Bradley is um, when he was growing up. He was just out of college. He started off as he started a dot com business. He wanted to burn. He wanted to burn a lot of his own. He wanted to burn a lot of his money on behalf, and he even took a lot of his grandmother's money to get it up and running. And unfortunately, it failed, and Zach wound up uh, moving in with his grandmother, and basically decided not to take any risks or high-end risks in the process. He's best, he's a box boy, okay. So his job is basically to go on the sales floor, grab. Okay, so you see, like, um, not the macaroni and cheese, but like. Um, these you know, items aren't particular, but like, take like uh, pasta sauce or coffee or canned chicken. All right, or, or like, look, take the tuna for example. Okay, like you'll have like, you'll probably have like six or eight of these in a particular box, and you'll have like boxes of them that will sit up in pallets. All right. They'll sit on this huge pallet, and you have a hole like that's about four or five feet tall. All right, and the job is to try to go through as many as possible. And believe me, depending on which area you're in, some will fly. Certain items will fly quicker than others. Okay, but basically, uh, Zach he takes those empty boxes. Okay. His job is basically he goes on the sales floor. He like those boxes that the merchandise comes in. He picks them up to the front end, which um, gives them the cashiers. Cashiers will use them to help box up members' orders when they're checking out the registers. Okay, so like the boxes, they do they get reused. Super Club, Sam's Club, Costco, they don't offer like those ordinary shopping bags because well, largely in part because. These items in the warehouse club, they're too bulky or and or too heavy for an ordinary shopping bag. So what they'll do is they'll reuse these boxes off the sales floor that are used to package the merchandise. When they get empty, Zach will uh, take those boxes up to the sales floor or up to the register, or at least that's what his job's supposed to be. And yeah, he finds himself to be a little bit of a slacker in the process. But at the same time, Zach is... A very kind-hearted, popular, and supportive character throughout the entire Super Club. Okay. Then there's Vince Downey, played by Dax Shepard. He is a completely right, opposite of Zach. Vince, um, he sounds charming, but at the same time. He can be like he can be charming towards the customers and management, but when it comes to his other co-workers, he can be an egotistical, rude asshole. All right. For, including his box boy, Jorge. All right. Whom he berates constantly in spite of Jorge always showing him loyalty and admiration. Okay. Z Vince has won employee of the month. 17 times in a row. 
Okay. After the opening credits, which gives you a little bit of a idea, it gives you a little bit more about what a warehouse club is like. We have our manager, Glenn, who is played by... See, Glenn, I mean, uh, Glenn Gary, played by Tim Bagley. And then we also have an assistant manager, Dirk Dittman, who's played by Sean Whalen. Okay? So, Glenn and Dirk, they decide to hold a meeting because they have some good news to deliver, or at least good news for Vince. Vince has broken the check stand speed record, is the fastest cashier in the Southwest. He earned himself a gold star for that news and unanimously gives him employee of the month for the 17th month in a row, which is the end of October, according to the script. So basically, um, Vince, when nobody has made it to 18 in a row, and it's going to be a huge deal. If Vince can make it to 18, if he can win employee of the month for the month of November, it will give him 18 consecutive Employee of the Month titles, and it also comes with extra benefits too, including the keys to a newish Chevrolet Malibu. He gets fast tracked to management, and <laughs> other benefits I couldn't even imagine. But basically, Glenn is sitting there trying to encourage his team: don't be discouraged. It's anybody's game. Even the slightest effort can help you earn a gold star. Pick up some, pick up, clean up a spill. Help a member find an item. Okay? Be a team member. All right? He also announces there's going to be a banquet at the end of the month, mandatory attendance and church clothes. And there's also going to be a sign up. For a softball game, which will be played towards the end of the month against their rival, Maximart. Okay? Which I believe is a, the fictional version of Walmart. But we'll get there in a little bit. Okay? So basically, the next day comes. We see Vince in action at the register, um, basically flirting with the customers and scanning their merchandise in a very um, unorthodox way. We see this girl walk in the door named Amy, played by Jessica Simpson. All right. She is a new, she is a new cashier at the Super Club, transfer from another location. All right. Halfway through the store, she gets stopped by this door greeter, which is, okay, uh, it's called Door Greeter Jerry, okay, played by Victor Eze, all right, Victor, for the longest time, I thought this, uh, got, this door greeter was played by George Carlin, because he kind of looks a little bit like George Carlin, okay, but let's take a look a little bit of what he's into, so he, um, has a few credits on he has a bunch of credits up his sleeve. Uh, let's see. He starred in the Waltons. He was in Little House on the an episode of Little House on the Prairie. He was in the movie Young Guns, Brotherhood of the Gun. He was the door greeter in Employee of the Month. He also starred in Star Trek Phase 2, the TV series. Just to give you an idea of some of the things that he has done. Okay. But he basically comes up to Amy and says, I need to see your membership card. She consistently says that she does not have, she consistently brags about how she works here. And Zach decides to take it from there. And they decide, and they basically, they bond pretty quickly. Until Vince comes up along and steals the thunder. Introduces himself as head cashier, which is his actual title. And Amy has heard so much about Vince, and Vince decides to take her for a stroll around the store. Meanwhile, okay, so Zach, 
I have to introduce you to a few of more characters in the mix. We have a couple of Zach's friends, okay? So we have Russell, who works on the sales floor. We have Iqbal. Let's uh, go, go through each of them, shall we? So we have uh, enough with Costco. We don't need to talk about that no more. So we have Russell, who is played by Harlan Williams. He works on the sales floor. We have Iqbal, played by Brian George, who works in electronics. All right. Brian George is one of two characters in this movie who have, also, who have made well-known appearances in the NBC sitcom Seinfeld. All right. Brian George had appeared in three episodes of Seinfeld, one of the better known sidekick characters on the show. He played Babu Bhatt, which um, he was a he was an immigrant from Pakistan. He opens up a dream cafe across from Jerry's apartment. But unfortunately, nobody comes. He's forced to shut down. And then about a season or two later, he makes a return. Jerry felt bad about how he, he about the dream cafe. He got Babu a job in the coffee shop that the Seinfeld gang usually frequents. And then he also got an apartment in Jerry's building. Unfortunately, one day. The mail got mixed up. His, he was expecting his visa renewal application, never received it, and he unfortunately got deported back to Pakistan. And then he comes back in the series finale at the end of the show's run to testify against Seinfeld and against Jerry and Elaine for the visa mishap. Okay? We'll get to the other one a little bit later, but basically you have Iqbal... Russell. Oh, there's also Lon, who is played by Andy Dick. Ew. What kind of things is it? Let's take a look at about okay, what Andy Dick is into. So, see, December 20, he was born December 21st, 1965. He was, um, okay, his first, he's best known as a comedian, actor, musician, television, and film producer. Known professionally as a comic, his first television role was on the NBC short-lived, or was on the Fox short-lived but influential show called The Ben Stiller Show. He also did No Less Than Perfect. And he also briefly had his own Andy Dick show on MTV. He's also known for his eccentric behavior and has struggled with drug addiction and numerous sexual misconduct allegations and arrests. God, this guy's so naughty. Okay, how do you wind up on this film? Okay. Anyway, Andy Dick plays this guy, Lon, who is an optical associate. Okay, works over in the vision. Okay. So anyway, um, Amy comes in, and um, Zach wants to know a little bit about her. So Russell has a little thing for Lily, who is the HR manager. He, just, he grabs some Butterfingers off the sales floor. So these candy bars, they come in like a huge... They don't sell them... Super Club does not sell these individually. They come in a huge box. Okay? So he breaks into one of the boxes of candy the Butterfingers, takes one, and then breaks it in half, goes over to Lily and asks for Amy's personnel file in exchange for his son. Okay? Russell will exchange some Butterfingers to Lily in exchange for Amy's personal file. And then the four of them, Russell, Zach, Iqbal, and Lon, they like to, to have their breaks and their lunch. They do their 15-minute breaks and their lunch breaks up in our secret clubhouse, which is far up in steel, that most people don't even know about. All right? They have to close up the aisle. In order to access the clubhouse, they have to close up the aisle. Zach, they have to hop in this little cart, which basically um, is lifted by a forklift. All right? And then he hops in the steel to access the clubhouse. Russell opens up Amy's personnel file to find out 
that Amy requested the transfer due to some romantic issues. Okay? She apparently had a thing for the employee of the month. And that gives Zach some crazy ideas. He um, insists that he is going to become the employee of the month. How hard can it be, right? Well, it's a little bit, it's a little bit harder than what he thinks, but he's got that confidence, all right, and he feels like he can handle it. Okay. So basically, to be employee of the month, or at least in Super Club, so like you have Russell and Lon and Iqbal, they basically go down the list of things that Zach would have to do in order to become employee of the month, including but not limited to. Being on time to work, never being late, not having any customer complaints at all, and going above and beyond your job description. All right? And one thing that they probably forgot to admit, forgot to include, kissing management's ass, which is basically... <laughs> All right. Okay. You have Russell, who's basically describing Vin. They basically see like Vince and Amy walking around the store, and Russell says, "He's the alpha male of the store. Chicks always go after the alpha male. They're like lions, kings of the desert. And you know, you're just a little tiny field mouse, dangling in the teeth of a lion while he's banging your chick. Oh, wait a minute, box boy." You're like the little hairy nutsack on the little hairy field mouse swinging back and forth while he's banging your chin. Russell, your metaphors are magical, but please shut the hell up. Just going back and forth, hairy canary style, in and out with his bit. <laughs> All right. God, what in the hell? All right, so. so let's see if there's any other quotes here that I can. I think I need to So, no other quotes for that. So, basically, um, as they're coming down the forklift after their break is over. Zach's talking about how he's going to be employed. He he's he's going to go get that employee of the month title in order to win Amy over. Because he's thinking if Amy if he can be the employee of the month, he'll win over Amy. Okay. And nobody has faith in him. Russell, Lon, Iqbal, and then down at the bottom is waiting Vince and Jorge, who also have no confidence in Zach. Vince is going to win it like he always has. All right. Next day co comes. And basically, Zach, uh, well, let's get there first. Like, Zach goes home. He goes home to his grandmother. Okay. Is, so, grandma, Zach's grandma, uh, basically known as Granny. Played by Barbara Dodd. All right. Barbara Dodd, um, may she rest in peace, born June 15th, 1930, passed away March 8th, 19. No, born June 15th, 1930, died March 8th of 2018. She was an actress, cast, and director, best known for Employee of the Month, Big. The 2007 film Big Stan, as well as the ABC After School Specials. All right, ABC After School Specials basically um, was an American television anthology series that aired on ABC from October 4th, 1972, through January 23rd, 1997. Okay, uh, usually in the late afternoon on weekdays. Most episodes were dramatically presented situations often controversial of interest to children and teenagers. Several episodes were either in animated form or presented as documentaries. Topics included illiteracy, substance abuse, and teen pregnancy. During the show's 25-year run, it wound up winning 51 Daytime Emmy Awards and lasted 
154 episodes. There is about six or so, each season lasted about six or seven episodes, to be exact. Okay, so that's uh, Barbara Dodd. So that's Barbara Dodd in a nutshell, okay? So basically, uh, he goes home to uh, put his vest on. Grandma, how do I look? Like a like a loser. <laughs> basically, she has no confidence in him. But she, just like uh, ever since they moved in together. And basically, Zach decides to step up the plate. He basically changes his alarm to wake up early. He's going to change his... He's due to work at 8.30 in the morning. And he changes his alarm um, to 7.58 a.m. Okay, probably from after 8 o'clock. Okay. We then head back to the Super Club. Where it's not even opening time yet. And we have... Vince, uh, we have Jorge, who's pretending to scan merchandise off Vince's register, pretending to be Vince, and he winds up slipping in the process. Wow. He was just trying to get Vince warmed up. But Vince is about to show Jorge what really gets him warmed up and takes him over to the Shelby Malibu that he's going to win once he wins that employee of the month title. All right. So while he's bragging about the Chevy, we see Zach coming in early, clocking in on time. And we even see you know, each register actually has boxes for once. All right. And Amy's got more than she can handle. Okay. Meanwhile, Vince, being the conceited asshole that he is, He's over at his register creating a show that not only impresses his customers, but also manager Glenn and cashier Amy is pretty impressed too. Meanwhile, you have Zach, you have Russell, you have many of the other cashiers. They're sitting there pretty pissed. They're sitting there pissed off at Vince saying, Show off. Five minutes or I'm buying. Five minutes or I'm buying. Basically going to get through that one order in five minutes or Vince is going to pay for his mer merchandise. And he gets it in within the last second. Okay? And he creates a huge show out of it. And, like, the customers love it. Manager Glenn loves it. Amy's impressed. But the other, everybody else, Show off. He's then forced to take his union mandated break. He heads into the cashier's lounge. And Vince decides, no, Zach, with the help of Russell and Lon, is going to step up to the plate. Lon's going to create a spill, um, a, jar of uh, a jar of fruit. Spill on the floor, page for a cleanup in the aisle, and then Zach's gonna grab a a mop with Glenn looking over in a very impressed look. But just as he's about to grab Glenn's attention, Vince comes running out of the cashier's lounge with a mop. And Zach's only reaction. You've got to be kidding me! And the two of them go running off with their mops to the aisle to clean them up. And unfortunately for Zach, there's a forklift with a pallet, okay, that is in the middle of transporting a pallet from steel onto the sales floor. And he winds up getting smacked in the head. Like the, the pallet is right in his path. As he's trying to, he's focusing on trying to get ahead of Vince. He does not see this pallet coming, and it smacks him right in the head. Zach is unconscious, leaving Vince to clean up the mess. 
And then you have Glenn over there watching Vince clean up the mess and giving Vince the thumbs up. We then see Zach in Semi's office. So Semi is another character I have to bring up. So Semi is a... He's played by Marcelo, Marcelo uh, Thetford. Okay. Marcella Thetford. There's no date of birth, but we know that he was... Um, he's a comedian. He's best known. He's got a few films on his resume. Particularly the 1997 film Volcano, the 2006 film Point of the Month, and 2009 film Thug Love. Those are the three films he is best known for. But he's got a wide variety of other credits, but he hasn't done anything since 2016. So we feel like he stopped doing movies and TV shows and has gone back to comedian work. But basically, he's a big sized black security guard who's basically. His job is basically to walk around the store, make sure everything's safe and everybody's okay. And he also goes and watches surveillance tapes for anything suspicious that's going on. Okay? It's kind of like an asset protection um, for the store. All right? So Zach's in Semi's office with a huge bag of ice. All right? And we know, and we're about to find out, like, how the employee of the month process works. So you have Glenn and Dirk, who basically like they, they go around the store, they're observing what the employees how the employees are working, how they're performing and stuff. And then in, towards the end of the day, you have um, either Glenn and or Dirk, okay? They will uh, get together and they'll, they'll decide like who deserves the, the gold star for the day. They'll put it in this little card. And they'll shoot it in, and put this in his little tube and shoot the tube out to Semi's office where he has a safe filled with these gold stars. Semi's job is to open up the tube, open up the card, and it basically tells him who to put the star, where um, that gold star goes for the day. Takes it to the employee locker room where there's a huge board on the wall with the employee of the month tracker. And put and semi puts the star up on the board, corresponding to the employee who Glenn and Dirk decided to award the star to for that day. Okay, so for this day, it go of course goes to Vince. All right. So Iqbal is throwing a birthday party for his kids over at his house, and he invites he invites Lonnie. Uh, he invites Lon, Zach, and uh, and Russell over uh, to keep him company while well, the kids uh, fool around. Zach decides to invite Amy over. Zach uh, is on Amy's good side as well. He decides to invite Amy over for this party that he's going to. But unfortunately, Amy turns him down mainly because Zach is already taking her out to the Steaksmith, which is a high-end steakhouse in the area, okay? So Vin, uh, Zach goes to congratulate Vince um, and uh, wishes him luck on his date. And guess what? In the process, well, I think we should wait for this in the next scene, which we're at this party, okay? We see Iqbal, Lon, Russell, and Zach at this dining table while all the other kids are running around the house. And Russell's saying, shouting, Jesus Christ, where the hell are we, Chuck E. Cheese Stan? How many kids do you have there, Iqbal? Uh, 22. So whose birthday is it by any chance? Whoever, opens, whoever blows up the candles first gets all the presents. Then Lon um, basically is a smart aleck. He's had a hard time looking is seen, which is pretty ironic for an optical associate. He looks over at Zach and says, Hey, Zach, the employee of the month thing isn't working out for you, is it? <laughs> Zach, knowing that Lon's being a smartass, he grabs some party poppers and he aims them right at Lon and pulls the trigger. And the 
and we hear a big bang right in front of Lon. And Lon shouts, what the fuck? <laughs> now, might I add, this film is rated PG-13, all right? <laughs> you can get away with the F-bomb once in a PG-13 movie. Twice or more, you're aiming at an automatic R. All right. One good example is the 1987 comedy Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, starring John Candy and Steve Martin. All right. There's this one scene in St. Louis where Steve Martin is at the ticket counter and he drops the F bomb at the ticket agent seven, it's got to be at least 17 times. I want a fucking car right fucking now. Now, the, that one scene by itself is more than enough reason to give that film an automatic R rating. Despite the fact that there's no F words used in any other scene in the movie, that one scene shoots it up to an automatic R. Okay? So anyway, back to, the, back to this film. So basically, Iqbal basically says, Oh, please, it's... It's for the honor, all right? It's quite an honor, okay? Let's see. Then they're sitting there basically um, munching on chips and beer. And they're winding up uh, talking about... It's, 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 it's a day's work of pride and honor. Uh, there's no pride working in that place. Think about it, guys. We could be working over there at Maximart, and that place really sucks. Pass me the chips there at eight balls, which is Lon. And then Lon says, Plus, I hear they make you wear those house arrest ankle bracelets so they know where you are all the time, and if you leave the main floor, you get a little shocker. Russell confirms. True. I know a guy up in upper management, man. He went crazy. Strapped one of those things around his hairy ball sack, ran out in the parking lot, and blew a $3 Hawaiian cooler all over the place. Knocked a little Korean kid right out of the shopping basket. And then it, Lon basically asked Zach, Oh, and speaking of $3 Hawaiian coolers, isn't Vince going out with Amy tonight? Yes, yes, he is, but that could prove problematic since I have his wallet. Want to get some pizza and some hookers? <laughs> so basically, it, while he was all over um, Vince earlier in the day, congratulating him on his date with Amy, he wound up stealing Vince's wallet out of his jacket. All right? So then we head over to the Statesmith, where Vince and Amy are having a good time, and they're just about to get, they're just about finished with their meal, and He's sitting there bragging about his speed competition record. Why um, climb Mount Everest when he could be the be the fastest speed checker in the Southwest? Then the check comes due. Vince goes to grab his wallet, and right there he realizes his wallet's gone. His wallet's gone. Oh, sad. Basically tells the waitress he left his wallet in his other car. And the waitress has no has no choice but to comp the meal. Well in that Well in that case, dinner's free on the house. That's the least I can do for fastest cashier in the Southwest. And then she also winds up offering to bring dessert menu over so Vince and Amy can add dessert on to the purchase as well. Well, you know, where, whose check this is coming out of? Most likely the waitress. Okay? Or at least that's the Steaksmith's policy. All right? Excuse me one second. So then they get back, so then as Vince goes to drop off Amy back at her house, and Amy decides that she's going to call the night. Vince wants to kiss Amy, and she holds back. 
Like, he's trying to make unwanted advances against Amy, and Amy wants nothing to do with it. And she locks herself in her house real fast. Vince, who ignores the signals, is basically, uh, she, he feels like she's in love with him. Ron, you just may an ask yourself, Vince. But let's let the movie, rest of the movie speak for itself, shall we? Next morning, we're back at Super Club. Vince um, is in the, the cat. He's in the um, employee locker room. Zach drops off Vince's wallet. Oh, I found your wallet over the herpes medication. Yeah, I was over there buying your Christmas present. And then Vince winds up bragging about how his day with Amy was so cool and wild. Amazing. Okay. We then head out to the parking lot where Vince and Jorge, they're sitting in Vince's 81 Honda. All right. And they're sitting there listening to the song, I Want to Kiss You All Over by, Ex by Exile. Okay. Sitting bragging about um, his car, he wanted flipping the mileage at least three times. Jorge asks what Vince is going to do with the 81 Honda once he gets to Malibu. Vince is going to say, sell most likely. I'm gonna go. It's going to be a multi-bid situation. You in? Oh, absolutely. This means the whole world to me. Okay. Jorge wants to take the car for a spin. He wants... To okay, he wants to take the car for a spin. He wants a ride. He wants a ride home. He wants a ride to the bus stop. No, absolutely not. No. But can I stay here and listen to the rest of the song? Absolutely. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I want to kiss you all. Love. Okay. Next scene. We're back in the super club. We have um, Iqbal, Russell, and Zach. They're all in the food court, and they get approached by Semi, who's basically ask who asks if they've seen a missing kid hanging around. Okay, so have you guys seen a little boy, a lost boy, walking around? Zach asks if Vince knows about it. Well, not at the moment. Until it pops up on his register, missing child, and apparently he turns into a robot, and he goes looking for the kid. So we see Zach and Vince, they go running through the store, trying to find this kid. It turns out this kid is over in the pharmacy department where he is standing behind a tennis ball machine. And like the machine that launches the tennis balls if you're playing tennis by yourself and stuff. You'll never get me alive! Bring it, bitch! <laughs> okay? And the kids are, You'll never get me alive! Bring it, bitches! <laughs> Bring it, bitches! <laughs> okay? Vince winds up taking one of the tennis balls and he knocks the kid out right in the face. Knocking him out right there. Oh, you got hit by brochet. I brought it, bitch. And then we see Vince take the lost boy through the store over to where the freezer coolers are, where the mother, as well as Glenn and Dirk, are standing there trying to figure out where their lost boy is. Vince delivers the boy. The mother hug gives Vince a hug. And, of course, Vince... Knowing the asshole that he is, but not only is he more than happy to hug the mother, he grabs her, he winds up grabbing her ass in the process. Sexual harassment alert. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> okay. Now the mother is so happy to see the, the kid is um, back and she winds up dragging the kid. Come on, let's go. So, and guess what? Vince gets himself another gold star. 
Zack realizes he's going to have to kick it up a notch. We see a montage going around where Vince is trying, where Zack is trying really, really hard to get on the board. And Vince just keeps sliding through. Okay. Get about half, we're about, we fast forward about a week or so into the about halfway point of the month or a third of the way through the month. Zach is back in the receiving area with the dot where the bay is open, sitting there, de- sitting feeling defeated. Iqbal comes over to have a conversation with Zach. Well, he's primarily over there just to pass gas. But he winds up having a conversation with Zach while he's there. Okay. Uh, let's see if I can find it. What were let's see. Let's see if I can find it. Uh, where is it? Okay. He winds up saying, Do, the world has a universe. The universe has a plan. And eventually, things will line up in the way that you want them to. Do it for pride. The rest will come, including the girl. Okay? So after that, so after that conversation, uh, Zach heads back onto the sales floor, where he comes across this okay, where he comes across this old lady, all right, who's trying to put a casket onto a flatbed, all right. Now apparently, Super Club sells caskets. Sam's Club does not, and let's see if Costco. Holy shit. Costco sells caskets. All right. So we're going to get to this in the trivia. So they, I don't know if they sell them in the store, but they definitely sell them online. Uh, going to the Costco website, these, most of these caskets, they sell for 1000 They sell anywhere from $1,149 up to $1,400. Okay. And that's in twenty twenty three dollars. Okay, so Zach. Okay, the, the lady's tr- trying to purchase a, a casket for her husband. Zach thinks he's dead, but no, he's not dead yet. She just came across an offer that's too good to pass up. So Zach helps her load it onto the flatbed, offers to help. Take it out to the car or load it in there. And she says, no, my husband's out there waiting for me. I'll have him load it. Well, good luck murdering your husband. <laughs> or trying to. So after that conversation, so she basically got a good, she it basically cheered her up. And on her way out, she runs into assistant manager Dirk, who basically comes up and says, oh, let me, uh, That man is wonderful. I'll be back for sure just because of him. Now, of course, Dirk, you have Zach and Vince that are both in the same vicinity. So, of course, Dirk is under the assumption that she's talking about Vince. But no. Oh, that man there? No surprise. Now, she runs over to Zach and points at him. This is the guy. He's a wonderful fella. Well, thank you. May I help you find your way to your car? I know where it is, idiot. Knowing how difficult the bitch is, Dirk realizes, okay, wow, Zach pleased a very difficult customer. He deserves a gold star for this. All right? So we see um, the card uh, coming into Semi's office, opens up the card, and realizes it's a... for, it's for Zach, all right? Before we move any further, we're gonna have to, let's talk about this old lady, okay? 
I'm very okay. This is and this is kind of a sad story. Okay. This old lady was played by Kathleen Ark. All right. Born December fifteenth, nineteen thirty nine. Died May twenty second, two thousand six, at the age of sixty six years old. She's mostly famous for her roles in the nineteen eighty two film Deadly Alliance, the two thousand six film. The Astronaut Farmer, and the 2006 film, Employee of the Month. Okay? Kathleen wind up filming her... This is the only scene that she's in. She wind up filming her scene. Right? She wind up passing away shortly after filming her scene. Or her lines in the film. She unfortunately never made it to see the actual film. In theaters. Such a shame. Okay. And I didn't even know that, about that until I did my. Until earlier today when I was doing research for this film. Okay. Pretty sad. But she's not the only one who's actually died. Before their film has come out. Okay. I can't. I know Spencer Tracy. Is probably a good example. He wound up filming his. Uh, the 1967 film Guess Who's Coming to Dinner. He wound up dying shortly after his final scenes were filmed. And he was lucky enough to get all of the scenes filmed prior to croaking, I mean, prior to passing on. But he never made it to see the actual film on the big screen. Okay. Let's get back to the film, shall we? So basically, um, Dirk realizes that okay, Zach has shown improvement, and he definitely earned a star for pleasing that grumpy lady, that um, or, or difficult customer, okay, that Dirk had witnessed firsthand. If he can please that woman, he deserves a star. Clear hand, puts the star up in the wall. Vince is pissed because his streak is over, but he's still in the winning. And then you have Vince. You have no, no. Vince and Jorge. They rock out. They were they, they storm out in disgust. They go running after Dirk to protest that start of Zach. Meanwhile, you have Zach's friends Iqbal, Lon, and Russell that all come up congratulating him on the star. And then Amy walks by and sees that Zach got a star and congratulates him. And insists that they go out and celebrate. She has the late shift, of course, so she um, asks him to pick her up after work. No problem there. Zach basically, Vince and Jorge, they then come back and they peek into the locker room. That was a fluke, Zach. No box boys ever won employee of the month. And then they wind up. Signaling this, all right. Not only does it mean loser, but it also has the middle finger in there as well. Okay, so Zach runs home and he can and he basically asks Iqbal to help, um, them to help him out with his date with Amy. He go he goes and gets he brushes his teeth, he gets he, t he showers and gets dressed and stuff. Grandma comes in and asks what Zach would like for dinner and says, no dinner tonight, I have a date tonight. With a girl? Okay. And she bit one piece of advice that she basically suggests to Zach, wash your balls. Okay. We then see uh, a time-lapse video pass of um, the late night shift, the evening shift at Super Club in the parking lot where all the cars are um, coming in and out, and then eventually the parking lot empties out for the night. Amy's about to um, get herself, um, she's, she's, she's grabbing her stuff out of her locker where she gets a visit from Vince. Vince invites her out to a, and invites, him to join him with a tampered bottle of Cabernet. 
bottle of wine, of course. Oh, not tonight. I have dinner plans with Zach. And, of course, Amy doesn't tell Zach. I mean, Amy doesn't tell Vince where Zach's taking her because part of the reason, she doesn't even know. So, you have Vince, who basically decides to go out with Hort. They decide... Vince and Jorge decide to uh, camp out in the 81 Honda out in the parking lot, all right? So basically, um, we see Zach have a date with uh, Amy. So they're, it starts off with a chicken parmesan dinner. They're sitting in the food court, of course. Chicken parmesan, I'm not sure if they got this from the food court or if they got this from the freezer area in the store. And they're being enjoyed with a bottle of water. A, a, a box of wine. Okay? So, Zach goes under the itinerary and basically decides we're going to do, we're going to take a couple of laps around the go, around the racetrack on the go-karts, a couple around the golf, catch a movie, of course. I don't think we're in a mood for, I don't think we're getting in shape of driving. Oh, believe me, where we're going, you're not gonna. You're not gonna need it. So basically, out in the parking lot, we see Vince and Jorge. They're sitting there camping out. They're trying to find a way to sabotage Zach and Amy's date because Vince really wants that girl. And apparently, nobody knows where they are. Amy's car is still in the parking lot, and Zach evidently doesn't have a license. So, there you have it. All right. We then see Zach and Amy hop on these go-karts. And they take, they do a couple of laps around the store on the racetrack. The racetrack is basically the main end aisle. Like, you have all, all these different aisles and stuff that are going uh, across and stuff. The main uh, aisle that goes up and down, adjacent to all the other aisles, okay? It's the main, like, considered like a hallway or something. Straight line, connect, and then basically there's one over here, and there's one over here, there's one in the back, and there's one down here. So that's why they call it a racetrack. Because when you look when you look at it from a, a blueprint, it's a straight it's it's a straight line here and here, and when you connect them together, it looks like a racetrack. Okay. They do a couple laps with the goal carts. Then, with the help of Iqbal, who's babysitting a couple of kids in the process, they they um, sit on the recliners with some popcorn as they watch the 1987 romance comedy, The Prince's Bride. Let's talk a little bit about that, shall we? Uh, let's see. I have it right here. Princess Bride is a 1987 fantasy American adventure comedy film directed and co-produced by Rob Reiner and starring Carrie Eels, Robin Wright, Mandy Pankin, Chris Sarandon, Wallace Shawn, Andre the Giant, and Christopher Guest. It is adopted by William Goldman from his 1973 novel of the same name and tells the story of a swashbuckling farmhand named Wesley, accompanied by companions befriended along the way, who must rescue his true love, Princess Buttercup, from the abdicious Prince Humperdinck. The film preserves the novel's metafictional narrative style by presenting the story as a book being read by a grandfather to his sick grandson. Peter Falk, I believe, is the one who plays the grandfather, and the grandson is played by Fred Savage. Then this was before he wound up going into the Wonder Years. Okay. The yeah. um let's see. Princess Bride was released on September 25th, 1987, on a $16 million budget and grossed $30.9 million at the box office. Which pretty much um they just about doubled its budget. Okay. So then we wind up on the roof of the Super Club, 
where Vince and Amy they're playing golf. So Zach basically gives Amy some tips. You're gonna put the ball into the little drain on the top of the club. It's gonna go down and it's gonna pump into pole number seven in the parking lot. Amy is basically she puts a little too hard. And she winds up smacking Jorge right in the... It winds up going into the 81 Honda and hitting Jorge right in the head. Ow, oh, my head! Vince realizes what's going on. He shuts up Jorge's really quick to keep Zach and Amy from finding out that they're actually down there. And then Vince winds up screaming, This is an 81 Honda! How dare you! <clears throat> Then they wind up, their last part of their date is up in steel, hanging above their clubhouse, in the dark, while this janitor comes, or maintenance person, comes down the hallway, or comes down the aisle, on his um, sweeper, singing an opera song, all right? Next morning comes, we are in Glenn's office, where he's basically playing with some dolls until he gets interrupted by Dirk. Dirk comes in to break the news that Glenn's brother, Glenn, Ro Glenn, um, Glenn Ross, is that? Yeah. Okay. Um, so Glenn Gary, okay, he's the store manager. He gets uh, interrupted by Dirk. Who breaks the news that Glenn's bigger brother, older or older brother, Glenn Ross, from corporate, is going to be coming in for an audit. To make matters worse, Dirk also breaks some shocking news, saying that the only trouble is we lost Janet on check stand three. She's her shift's about to begin. Find her. Lost as in passed, lost as in dead. She passed away last night. So she's not coming in? I don't think so. <laughs> so Glenn decides to host, he decides to hold an emergency meeting with all the associates in the locker room. So they get together, and basically Glenn is breaking, uh, first he breaks the news about Janice's passing, and then also announces that Glenn, from corporate, is coming in for a visit, all right? And basically says, all right, he can be imitating. Do not let him get to you. That's just his way. The one and most important thing, we cannot get the registers above 25 shoppers. That's impossible. It's a for Saturday, and we're short one register. At that point, Zach volunteers to man check stand number three. Okay, I'll do it. I'll work check stand number three. Is that legal? Technically, he can, yes. Perfect. Zach will throw you in the train immediately. Vince is protesting because he doesn't want, okay, he knows that Zach is going, is stepping up to the plate. He's going to win himself another star. And Vince is going to do everything he can to sabotage Zach in the process. All right. He's basically sitting there. Think about everything he can do to keep Zach from working the register. But unfortunately, Glenn doesn't want to hear it because I'm up against the wall. Up against the wall, motherfuckers. <laughs> All right. So then um, we get, the store opens up and Zach is on a register. We don't see him getting I'm not sure if he got any training before they opened. But apparently he's on the register. He sees Vince, and he basically just tries to copy him. Okay. Instead of brushing it through the scanner, he's put he's using the hand scanner. Okay. And of course, the hand scanner is only supposed to be used for like items in the basket and anything that um, can't be reached by the scanner. Okay. So we have Dirk and Glenn. Glenn is uh, the Glenn and Dirk. They're running around the store while Glenn is freaking out in panic about. His brother's visit. Then Glenn Ross makes a visit. And you're not going to believe 
this one. The Glenn from Corporate. He's a tiny little dude. It's like three feet tall. Right? We can't say midget, but we could probably say dwarf or little peep, little person. It's probably the more PC way of saying it. Okay. Glenn Ross is played by Danny Wilburn. All right. He's the other um, person I was telling you about that for, that was mostly famous from Seinfeld. Oh, that's it? I thought he appeared in more than that. Apparently, he appeared in a total of seven episodes of Seinfeld. All right? I thought he appeared in more than that. But he, appeared, he was apparently a regular sidekick with Kramer in the later half of Seinfeld. The fact he only did seven episodes, that's pretty shocking. He comes in, Jerry um, greets him and says, get him a big, bigger smile. He tells these um, showroom people to go back to work. They're sitting there hanging around. He tells them to go back to work. And then you have a pickup person who's on, the, who's on the phone with a customer. And basically, Glenn takes a white glove, takes a smear on the counter, Finds a little bit of dust. Says, Grab a rag and clean. Now! And then Glenn and Dirk, they make a pop in. And basically, Big Glenn makes, okay? He makes manager Glenn pop down. He is your brother. So what makes you, um, so what brings you in so soon? I thought you were only coming for the banquet. I want to make sure you're running up to my standards. I don't want to get rid of my own flesh and blood. Looks like the lines are a little bit long. So then we see, so then when we see Glenn, Dirk, and Glenn, and his corporate buddies, they're all making a walk across the front. They see Vince doing his usual, and then we see Zach, who's stocking, who's basically um, scanning the merchandise, and then manager Glenn, he quietly gives Zach the thumbs up. So because Zach stepped up to the plate and helped save Super Club during a corporate visit, he wound up receiving another star. Okay. So his friends are even they are not as impressed with him then as he was before. Especially now that he has received Full access to the cashier's lounge. Dirk walks in to the locker room right after Zach receives his gold star. Congratulations, Zach. Zach, here is your full here's your card. It gives you full access to the cashier's lounge. All you do is slide it through the machine and you get full access. Okay. Russell, Juan, and Iqbal. They silently congratulate him, and then they walk out the door. And, of course, Zach pretends to throw the card out as it's not going to mean anything to him. But after they leave, he grabs it out of the trash, and he pockets it. Okay. Next scene, apparently, Glenn, uh, apparently Zach and Amy, they're both off for the day. We're in this natural food store. Okay. Natural Grocers, I think, is the title. The store. Zach is sitting there uh, with, with a cart full of produce in his basket, and then Amy is on the other. She's on the other side. She's right around the corner. She winds up seeing Zach and is so happy. She purposely tries to crash. She crashes into Zach. And, what are you doing here? Oh, please don't let anybody know that I shop here. I'm really picky about what I eat. <laughs> and then Grandma comes in for a visit. Oh, Zachy, where can I find... Where are the other Zach laxative teas? Oh, you must be the big-eared girl. She is smoking hot. Okay, so she goes to check out, and she's going to wait for Zach outside. While Zach and Amy, they finish their little... Okay, they decide to finish their shopping over in the vegetables. Okay, so Zach winds up telling Amy about his past. 
he winds up, I mean, he had borrowed a lot. He had, was fresh out of college. He thought he knew everything. He wound up getting, uh, he wound up starting his own business. He even had a mail box, mailboxes, etc. Borrowed a lot of money to start up. It failed. He lost everything. And he wound up moving in, he wound up living in with his grandmother as a result of that. And he also decided, maybe I thought I'd take something a little bit too, okay, of something a little bit uh, that would not um, hurt anybody. Except your own future? Well, thank you, Dr. Phyllis. Then, <laughs> Grandma screams across the store, Zaggy, what's my PIN number? One, two, three, four, Grandma. Now we've got to change it again. <laughs> So then the next day we see Zach, he's working off checks in three. And then Vince is winding up. Um, he's doing another one of his five minutes around buying segments in which he's scanning. There's a roll of toilet paper or paper towels that doesn't have a barcode on it. And he sees it up and steals. So he grabs his hand scanner and goes to go steal the scan the uh, barcode up and steal. And unfortunately, there's an employee with a ladder who's grabbing it out of steel. And that, hand, and that hand scanner, instead of scanning the barcode, it winds up scanning the employee's eyes. It blinds him so badly, he falls off the ladder, and he gets hurt. All right? Dirk and Glenn are not too happy. And, of course, they don't yell at Vince. They say, like, oh, I think we're going to need insurance for this. <laughs> Plus, Vince got stuck paying the bill. All right? Basically, he's pulling it day in and day out, all right? Like, and then we wind up going into this montage where Zach is on a roll. He's going to star after star after star. And meanwhile, we see Vince sitting there in a, in a upset, pissed off mode saying, my copes and glories for this employee of the month are falling away faster than I can think of. Jorge winds up paying Vince a visit to ask if he's okay. And then Vince asks, like, what does she like about him that she doesn't like about me? Apparently they have a lot in common. They finish each other's sentences. Vince tries to re he tries to copy a lot of Zach's antics, especially in front of Amy, and unfortunately, no luck in that. Not at all. So yeah. Then we wind up we wind up seeing um then one morning and then Zach comes in, he clocks in. And he overhears Glenn and Dirk screaming about these pallets that are supposed to go up and steal. They have nowhere to put them. And he's angry that his brother is going to make him send them back. And they can't afford to send them back because it will hurt their margins. And basically, he just, and Zach volunteers like, he first he asks how many pallets that they're talking about. He volunteers to temporarily put those pallets up in Zach's clubhouse, okay, which pisses off his friends, okay, Russell, Lon, and Iqbal, they all head up to their break later that morning, they say, how much longer are we, uh, how much longer is it good? How much longer do we have to play Texas Hold'em with three people? It sucks. Different cashiers have different break times. Cashiers have different break times. Okay? And then they wind up seeing these all these pallets of cheese inside the clubhouse. They're pissed off because they had a feeling of who it was. Only four people know about this place. And we know that it wasn't Russell, and it wasn't Lon, and it wasn't Iqbal. We see Zach from a far distance. Uh, he's looking around to see if anybody's looking before he sneaks into the cashier's lounge. Runs into Amy. Amy's got plans later that night. 
and invites Zach to go along with her, and he accepts. So he, so she plans on picking him up from work after she's done. Okay, he runs up running into Vince in the cashier's lounge, invites Zach to sit down and enjoy a nice can of Coke, Coca Cola that is. All right, and then Vince winds up proposing. Here's the deal. You lay off. I get employee of the month. I get the girl. I get the Chevy. I get the promotion. In return, when I become manager, I'll let you keep your job. How about that? Zach's response, thanks for the Coke. He's not gonna go, he's not going down without a fight. Okay. And they wind up getting into a heated argument with each other before Zach leaves. But right outside the cashier's lounge, Zach has another confrontation. What the hell happened to our fort? He's basically saying, like, it's only going to be, this is only temporary. It's only for a couple days. If you can, hopefully you can bite it. And uh, when I when, when I get it, you'll have it back. Okay. They're not too impressed. But then, of course, later that night, Amy goes to pick up Zach. And they're gonna ho- they're gonna head off somewhere on a date. And guess who's hanging out outside Zach's house? When is this happening? Vince and Jorge, and it's Vince's '81 Honda. And of course, they're wearing pantyhose, which Jorge got from his mother's gym bag. Disgusting. So they take so they take off the gym, they take off the pantyhose, they break into Zach's house and tamper with all the clocks. Okay. Their plan here is, okay, they can tamper with the clocks, they can try to get Zach. Late for work one day. Hopefully, Zach will oversleep and he will be late for work. And if he gets late for work, that will be the end of his shot at employee of the month. All right. That's what they're thinking of. All right. So they change the clocks, they sneak out and they head up and they wind up leaving before Zach makes it back. Apparently, they made it to some kind of carnival or something. They were at some uh, carnival or fair or something because they wanted winning some kind of... Zach wanted winning some stuffed animal for Amy. And they had a good time. So basically, Zach uh, gets dropped off in front of his house. He goes, in the, he goes into the house for the night. Next morning, all right, Zach wakes up. Clear. Okay. Zach winds up waking up. It's bright and sunny up. The alarm clock reads 5.52 a.m. Okay. Couple things here. First of all, this is the month of November. This is filmed in Albuquerque, New Mexico. All right. It is not going to be. Okay. If it were during the summer, you would probably have, you would most likely have sun. It would be bright and sunny. At 5.52 in the morning. Well, at least it is in Arizona. But not in the month of November. Alright? He senses something's amiss. The alarm clock's ringing 5.52. It's bright and sunny out. So he goes to the one clock that he, that Vince never tampered with. Because it was in his, because Zach had it in his pocket the whole time that Zach I mean, the whole time that Vince and Jorge were in Zach's house. All right? He checks it out. It's 8.18 a.m. And he's, and his shift starts at 8.30. Oh, no, no! 12 minutes, shit! He grabs his clothes, puts them on real quick. He notices the other clocks in the living room and kitchen are messed up as well. And then he also notices something really interesting. 
there is a bottle of orange Sobe. All right. This is Vince's favorite drink. Vince mu must have brought it into the house with him when he was working the clocks, and he forgot to take it with him. But it was basically a huge clue to Zach about who was behind all this. Da, 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 da. Vince. Now he's pissed. So, Eric, I mean, Zach winds up. He has this very tiny motorized scooter that he wound up purchasing at the beginning of the movie. Okay. And he winds up, he's driving hastily down the streets trying to get to Super Club in time. Okay. Meanwhile, you have Jorge and Vince. They're sitting there drinking donut, Dunkin' Donuts coffee and probably munching on a donut or two while, in, I, while eyeing the time clock. Okay? Hoping that Zach does not make it in on time. All right? Meanwhile, you have Amy, who's looking around for Zach. Ask Vince if she if he has seen him and says, and they're like making some kind of inappropriate smirk, like, yeah, they're they're up to something, but they're not gonna tell. Oh, we've never seen our box boy. We have not seen box boy Zach. Walks out the door. All right, she uh, leaves. Then Iqbal, he goes to clock in. He notices. Something is wrong because he notices that Zach's card is still in the thing. You have Vince and Jorge sitting there eyeing the time clock. Iqbal notices something suspicious, so he does something which we'll discuss in a minute that will eventually um, benefit Zach in the process. So, eight thirty sharp, Zach shows up at Super Club, walks in the door. Is that all you got? He goes to find his time clock, his time card, and before he has a chance to before he has a chance to locate it, the clock hits eight thirty one. Zach feels like he's defeated. No. Meanwhile, you have Vince and Jorge. Yes, yes, it's over. It's over. Mm -hmm. Not so fast. Iqbal comes up. To Zach and asks him to cover Iqbal. So one of his kids has a soccer game on Friday and asks Iqbal to help cover his shift while he's gone. On it, Iqbal. And the at the same time he's asking, presents a card to Zach. It's Zach's time card. And it turns out when Iqbal notices that something that Iqbal, I mean, Iqbal had noticed that Vince and Jorge were doing something they weren't supposed to. And that they were basically trying to sabotage Zach. So Iqbal took the honors of punching Zach in on time at 8.30 a.m. Okay? And, he, and Zach winds up showing the card to Vince. You're right on time. Thank you, Igbal. Vince goes to check the card. No! Nice try, Vince, but you lost. Okay? Next scene, we're at the registers. Okay? Uh, we have this uh, short, balding customer. Okay? He's in the script as balding customer. Okay? Played by John Hardman. Okay? Don't really know much about John Hardman, except for the fact he's got a couple of credits. So he's got, he was in a total of 17 credits. He was in Blind Horizon from 2003 as a bartender. He was 
He played minor characters in the 2005 film North Country, the 2010 film Love Ranch, and he was also the balding guy or the balding customer in Employee of the Month. So he only has a couple of minor roles. Okay, so basically, he comes up. To, the balding customer comes up to Vince with a pull ticket. Okay, now apparently, um, in a warehouse club, pull tickets are basically designed for um, items that are either too big to take through the register or are items that are locked up in a cage for security purposes, okay? Such as computers, laptops, security systems, software, stamps, okay? Things that are very, very there are very high risk of getting stolen if they're to be left out and about, all right? So he comes up with a pull ticket. Vince uh, rings up the item and presents the receipt. This is a big item. I'll have somebody grab it for you. Nice shirt. Radio, please. Check stand one. We got a bulk item, a piece of shit Honda, Nile 116. On it. <laughs> Check stand one. We got a bulk item, a piece of shit Honda, Nile 116. <laughs> so basically, he's purchasing a piece of shit Honda. All right. The salesperson goes to look at it and tells Vince, Ah, uh, Vince, I think I want to see this. He has Jorge watch his register while he goes to check it out. And the balding guy and the balding customer goes running after Vince. Vince looks up and steal. Holy shit. His 81 Honda is up in steel. And little did he know, he just ran it up to this balding guy. And of course, he's not going to give it up without a fight. God, what kind of sick animal? God damn it, someone get this down. Is there a problem here? Yeah, that is my car. No, it's mine. I bought it. No, I bought it. Here's my receipt. The only thing you own is that crazy Hawaiian shirt. This is my vehicle. Uh, I need to speak to a manager right now. Where is he? So now Vince is in a very tight pickle. Manager Dirk winds up coming over, and first he speaks to Dirk. And he winds up speaking to the balding customer. Then when he's done, he winds up coming over to Vince. And unfortunately, it is not good news. Technically, if it's on the rack and in the system, we are required to sell it to him. If we don't, he's threatening to write a complaint. Meanwhile, at the very end of the uh, at the very other end of the aisle, we see Zach looking in on the on the, on the situation. He walks away, and when he's out of plain sight, he screams, "Yeah, woo!" Vince realizes what's going on, and he realizes what's at stake. He, unfortunately, he doesn't really have a choice. He agrees to the sale, and he lets the balding guy drive off in his Honda. Fine. Sorry. So he basically drives off, and then Jorge comes. You know, Vince um, is in the parking lot saying goodbye to his Honda, while Jorge comes up and says, I can't believe you sold your wheels to that dude. You promised you were going to sell it to me. And for $9,980 less than what you would have sold it to me? <laughs> okay. Vince didn't really have a choice here because the customer was going to write him up, one write up, and he's out of the game. In order to keep in order to keep his streak going, in order for him to keep his title for employee of the month at stake, in order for him to stay on. Uh, uh, on target for getting that Chevy Malibu, he had to do what he had to do. And this gives him extra mo this gives him extra um leverage to get him over the top of the hill in an efforts to seal the deal on the employee of the month. Okay. Jorge 
doesn't want to speak to Vince anymore. I'm not your wingman. You're nothing to me. You got to be kidding. Without me, you're nobody. Okay. Because of the way Vince handled, because of the way Vince handled the situation, management decided to award the gold star that day to Vince. It is now 15 to 14 in honor in favor of Vince, with just one day left in the in the month. And of course, you know what's going to happen on that last day. There's a softball game, okay, happening, and Vince is going to be participating in it. Tomorrow, when I get on a softball field, hit a couple dinners, it'll be party time in my Chevy Malibu. And then Zach says, we well, bad news for you. It ain't over to your mama sings. Guess what, Zach? Mama don't sing. Next day, we are, uh, before the store opens, we are having a staff meeting. And basically, Glenn is talking about the softball game, which his brother, Glenn from corporate, will be attending. And it's very important that they beat Maximart. Okay? And because Janet from Check Stand 3 had passed away, they're in need of a new outfielder. And he's looking for volunteers. Zach winds up joining the party just a little bit later than everybody else. And Glenn, went, and as soon as he sees Zach, Volunteer Zach for the role. Zach decides to run out to the softball game, but, but on his way out, runs into Iqbal saying, Iqbal, Zach, where are you going? The softball game. No, 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 you're supposed to cover me, right? Mikhail's championship game. Okay? Mikhail's championship game. Oh, I can't. But it's a championship. You want Iqbal? I got you. You sure? Glad our friends are far. Okay. So now Zach's in a pickle. They're expecting Zach to be at the softball game. And unfortunately, he's stuck at the club covering Iqbal Electronics. But that's not the but that's not the only problem they have. The super club uniforms got they actually got washed in with the red with the red socks for the uniform, so the uniforms are pink. All right. So soup. Okay. Whoever wrote the script, they did it in a very clever way because you have Z Z Super Club. Their uniforms are sup allegedly supposed to resemble the Boston Red Sox. While the Maxi Mart uniforms are supposed to resemble the looks of the New York Yankees. Hence, Boston Red Sox and New York Yankees rivalry. One of the fiercest rivalries in Major League Baseball. Or probably the fiercest rivalry in all of Major League Baseball. Okay. So. Glenn is pretty pissed off. Because not only... Are the uniforms pink, but also Zach's missing. And Maximar takes advantage of this situation by basically taking a huge lead and putting Super Club in their place. Meanwhile, at Super Club, Zach is sitting there watching around. Nobody's coming to his department. And he's basically realized, and at this point, he realizes he's better needed on the softball field. So he says, I'm out of here. And he storms off. Okay, he he shows up, all dressed up in his softball um, gear, and he starts to play like a decent softball player. And unfortunately, and with his presence, he's able to help Super Club get back on track, and also take the lead over Maxi Mart. Okay. Meanwhile, at the same time, any time that Vince, I mean, anytime that Zach does anything productive, such as catch a high ball or hit a home run, Vince is right there trying to criticize, falsely criticize every single mistake that, okay, trying to find a way to get Zach disqualified. Excuse me. Sure. 
not too impressed with Zach. He, okay? Anytime he hits a home run, Vince is going to say, that ball, that bat is court. Okay? Or anytime he catches a high ball, that ball hit the ground. Doesn't count. Trying to ensure that Zach does not get credit for anything productive Super, Bowl Club, Super Club does for that game. Okay? Meanwhile, shortly after Zach had left the club to attend the softball game, the customers or the members, they start showing up in numbers to the electronics department. Starts off with one, then we wind up with about five or so people, and then there's about a dozen. All right. By the time we get to five people, we have okay, they're basically asking for assistance, and they basically hear an intercom over the speakers. Eight ball, please report to electronics. Eight ball to electronics, please. Okay. Meanwhile, Super Club is hanging on to a, sl a one-run lead over MaxiMart in the bottom of the ninth. And at that point, Zach decides to call a timeout and delivers a motivational speech to the team in an effort to try to give them the win. Where buy in bulk is our God-given right. Okay, that's the Super Club model. So basically, um, we have a high ball in the air. Vince and Zach they go running, uh, they go running uh, after the ball, and they run, run, run crashing right into each other in the process. But guess who's holding that ball in the air? It's Zach. Super Club has won the game because of Zach's performance. Now, Glenn was so proud of Zach's performance in that game that basically he they, he decided to award. The last gold star for the month to Zach, which puts Zach and Vince in a tie, 15-15, for the Employee of the Month competition. Glenn Ross, the corporate guy, he has to, he publicly announces that the tie there's going to be a tiebreaker tomorrow night at the banquet with a check stand rain off, winner takes all. Okay, so they all go back to work. Okay. Vince, on the other hand, he's sitting there unconscious with a bag of ice on his head. Zach must have hit him. He, he must have gone down really hard when he crashed into Zach to catch that game-winning fly ball. Right? But, of course, he was conscious enough to hear about what was going to happen next. And Jorge's about to leave, but then, he, but then Vince asks Jorge to come back to him. I need your help. Come back to me, wingman. Jorge needs some time to think about it. Okay? Which Iqbal, which um, Vince is willing to give. Okay? Then we head into probably the most emotional scene of the entire movie, or one of the most. We go back to, we're, we're in electronics. Where we see Dirk and Iqbal having a conversation, we don't see exactly what exactly what's being said, but we kind of know what's the gist of the conversation. So basically, Dirk is trying to ask Iqbal, Iqbal, where the hell have you been? We had a huge rush over here, and you weren't here to help the customers. Zach was supposed to cover for me. No, Zach was at the softball game. Don't give me that. Clean up your locker and get out of here. You're fired. Okay. Dirk basically. Um, because um, there is no coverage in electronics, and he decided to fire Iqbal on the spot, storms out the door. I mean, so basically, Dirk he goes run, walking, running down, walking fast down the aisle, storming off, while Iqbal goes the other direction, feeling defeated, and takes off his work vest. So then we head back to the employee locker room. You have Iqbal, Russell, and Lon. They're all there, very disappointed. Zach runs in to share the good news that he had tied up the competition. I did it. I did it. I tied it up. Tied it up. What's going on? Iqbal got fired. They fired him. Why? 
Apparently, Anch immediately did a special on dirty electricity, and there was a mad rush on power strips while he was at Mugala's soccer game. So, Zach, what he had, um, so basically, Zach and Iqbal had a deal where Iqbal was going to go to his kid's soccer game, and Vince was, okay. Iqbal was going to go to the soccer game, his kid's soccer game, while Zach covered Iqbal in electronics. And because he wound up leaving for the softball game, leaving no coverage in electronics, that pissed off management enough to fire Iqbal in the process. So, he's trying to apologize what's going on, but of course Iqbal doesn't want to hear anything, and neither do Russell or Lon. They they storm out of the room. Wait. Iqbal cleans out his locker, he hustles out, followed by Russell and Lon, leaving Zach there upset. Okay? Thinking about what he had done. This is, okay, this is all your fault, Zach. Haven't you done enough? I can see right through you. Then you have manager Glenn and assistant Dirk who basically comes into the locker room where Zach's the only one in there and drags Zach with them. They're going to take all the cashiers out to the steak smith and they want Zach to join them. Zach, we we're so proud of you, okay? Come with us. We're taking all the cashiers to the steak smith. We are so proud of you today. So then we head over to the steak smith. You have Ron Iqbal and Russell, they're all having a beer at the count, okay, at the bar. Meanwhile, there's a huge party table over at the, okay, over in the main restaurant. And you have, pretty much, it's a, it's a whole party going on. You have manager Glenn, you have Dirk, you have corporate Glenn, along with Zach, Vince, Amy, and every other cashier are all sitting there having dinner. Corporate Glenn is sitting there talking about how he's very impressed with Vince's register. You ever seen his register? Not a spick of dust, not a single tool out of place. Well, I guess I can go. I guess I can get a little anal. Zach's response: Actually, here it gets a lot. <laughs> now that's funny. Okay. Glenn uh, basically tells his manager, Glenn, "Hey, why don't you?" Okay. How about the little sit in it? How about we send the girl to go get some drinks for us? I, um, the manager Glenn says, I don't think I don't think Amy appreciates you talking about the little girl. I mean you, Nancy. But Amy is, is, is decides to go grab him after way. After all. The corporate Glenn then bends over to Zach and says, I left to this girl's personal file. I hear she only has to go after employee of the month. Meanwhile, you have one of the guys at the bar throws a fruit wedge over at Zach, and it hits him spot on. Zach decides to head over and try to apologize. He tries to apologize for his actions and tries to make peace, but unfortunately, they're not very forgiven. Okay, they're they're still upset about what happened, and they're very not very forgiven. And you have Andy Dick or Lon. He winds up getting into Zach's face and says, the Zach we knew never would have sold out his friends because some blonde tart would sleep with the employee of the month. So fuck off, buddy. Amy hears the conversation. Is this true? She gets, she's shocked and upset in the process. She leaves the restaurant. Zach goes to run after her, trying to fix what was said. You thought I was sleeping with you if you want to play in a month? Who told you that? Your personal file. Oh, I see. So that's why you've been working so hard. No. I mean, yes. I mean, between between reading that, between find, hearing about that and you with Vince, I thought you were different. You really want to know if I screwed the employee of the month in my last job? No. Well, I did. 
but it was also my boyfriend and a lying, combining asshole user just like you. You employee the months are all alike. And she huffles off. All right. Zach is heartbroken. Meanwhile, back in the restaurant, Vince is looking out the window, seeing everything going on, and he's just holding it in. You lost, Zach. I won. Okay. Zach heads back to the super club to pick up his stuff. And I think, I don't know if he cleans out his locker or what, but he winds up hanging up in the top of steel to hear the maintenance guy um, singing again before heading home. And then 7.58 in the morning pops up, which is his regular alarm time. He looks at the alarm clock, hits the snooze, and goes right back to sleep. Then, Grandma comes in. What? Why aren't you dressed for work? Isn't today the big day? And then, Vin and then Zach is basically munching on a pizza. Now, we don't know if Grandma ordered this pizza, or if Zach brought it home, or what. Or if he wound up ordering it after he got home. I don't know what the hell happened. He's sitting there eating leftover pizza. I quit. Why? Because I'm a screw screwed up, Grams. Amy hates me. My friends hate me. They're all right. I'm a loser. Well, you certainly dressed for the part. Thanks, Grams. You know that loser who lost all my retirement? You know that loser who lost all my retirement money? Well, that guy actually tried. I'll take the old sack any day. And then she walks off. Then, Zach, he, eventually he got dressed, and he wound up going over to Iqbal's house, where apparently Russell and Lon are also there, too. Apparently, Zach's a train wreck, but he comes to apologize and tries to make amends with the, with the group. He basically apologized for his behavior. He didn't realize who his real friends were. He wind up taking full responsibility for what happened. He put in his resignation, and Iqbal wanted to get his job back in the process. Iqbal doesn't want his job back. Getting fired gave his wife the courage to demand that demand demand that promotion that she was truly wanting. And because she's now making enough money, she's basically making enough money. To have, so he can stay home and be a stay-at-home dad. So he doesn't need the money anymore to support the family. So he should be thanking Zach for getting everything fired. And basically, Lon and Russell have kind of forgiven in the process. You know what, Iqbal, you were right. What, what you told me the other day. The universe has a plan. And I'm going to go win an employee of the month. I'm not going to do it to beat Vince. I'm not going to do it for Amy. I'm going to do it for my pride. I'm not going to do it for Employee of the Month. I'm not going to be do it to beat Vince. I'm not going to do it to for Amy. I'm going to do it for myself and my pride. But I need you guys' help. You with me? We never went anywhere. But there's one little problem. Zach quit. And they got to find a way to undo it. But, of course, Russell has a, has a solution. Nothing a little old broken candy won't fix. He grabs out another broken Butterfinger, and he, now his plan is to approach Lily over in HR and undo the filing, work, filing of his paperwork to keep him employed. All right? But we'll get there in a moment. First... We go to the next scene, which we see this yellowish Honda driving up to the back of Super Club. And out comes Jorge. Jorge eventually bought himself a brand new set of wheels. And, might I add, fully alarmed. All right? He has made a, he has done some thinking. He's going to come back to help Vince on one condition. Vince helps him get full access to the cashier's lounge. 
which Vince is more than happy to do. I'll come back on one condition. Name it. You give me full access to the cashier's lounge. Deal. So now they're heading from the back of the store to the front. And Vince is trying to seduce Amy, which she doesn't want any part of. And then Manager Glenn gets up on stage and makes the sad announcement. Zach Bradley quit this morning. Everybody's shocked and upset and disappointed except for Vince, which he is bursting with excitement. Yes! Yes! Mm -hmm. And just as Manager Glenn is about to make Vince the Employee of the Month, we hear a whistle, and then we see Zach and his friends coming down in a single line, approaching the stage. He's basically there, and then Vince is trying to protest, okay? No, 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 you, you already said he quit. You already announced it and everything. Then Russell says, technically the papers were never filed. He winks at Lily to go along with the story while she's chewing on a Butterfingers bar. Meanwhile, you have Vince, who is sitting there screaming at Lily. Oh my God, you sold yourself for a candy bar. And then Lily confirms with Glenn that Zach, yes, Zach is still employed with the company. What are you kidding me? Get that chocolate bar out of your mouth and do your fucking job. So Glenn is happy that Zach is still employed because now they get to do the check stand rain off that they worked so hard on putting together. So basically, Zach and Vince, each of them are going to get their own register, and each of them were given a shopping cart filled with the exact same items. Okay, We know that there was toilet paper. We know that there were Tampax tampons and a wide variety of other items. So let's uh, take a look at some of the other items that were in that shopping cart. Check Stan Renoff. Okay. We're going to take a brief break while we wait for this to load up. So basically, before um, the competition starts, Vince goes up to apologize to Amy and also thanks her in the process. Because without her, he would still be the slacker that he had always been. But because of her, he uh, had proven himself to be a, a, more of a winner than he had always been. Okay. So that's uh. So then we have Jorge and Vince there. Sitting there stretching while Zach is trying to figure out a box boy, which we're going to have Russell. He's going to box for Zach. Then we have Dirk up on the stand who's going to monitor everything. He basically pulls out a whistle. Wish you the best of luck and go. So, all right, we see candy. We see, oh, we see clothing. Okay. So we basically see, um, Couple of female employee, okay, couple of females, particularly employees or cashiers, they're basically grab, they're taking the items out of the shopping carts and they're throwing them onto the belt, so that Vince and so we have both Vince and Zach scan the same items together, and the object is whichever one of them scans all of the merchandise the fastest wins the whole thing, okay. The loser gets to congratulate the winner. So, let's see. We have clothing. We have Charmin toilet paper. We have Splenda. Okay. A bunch of happy people. 
Now the merchandise is going so quickly, but we have there's a Charmin, we have the scut, we have the dish rags, we have equal sugar. There's got to be some candy in the process. There's Folgers coffee. There's Quaker eight. Oats oatmeal, and we will discuss the Quaker Oats in just a moment because there's going to be play a huge part of the thing. But yeah, there's the Tampax, and there's some um, beef broyer. All right, the Splenda. We have soap, ice cream. Hold on a second, ice cream. Are you fucking insane? That stuff's gonna melt all over the registers. We have pumpkin seeds, frosted flake cereal. We have Listerine. And then at the bottom of each of their shopping carts is a tire. But unfortunately, the tire has no barcode on it. So this is curveball number one. What do you do? There is no chin. There's no price check available, and there's no barcode. What do you do? Zach decides to take the tire back to Automotive to switch it out with another one that has a barcode on it. And, of course, you have Vince that runs right after him. And, of course, everybody goes chasing after him. Oh, curveball number two. Glenn and Dirk. They each present a shopping cart full of go-backs. Exact same items in the shopping cart. And before they can make it back to... Before they can make it back to the register to scan the tire, they have to take every one of these go-backs back onto the sales floor. So, in the shopping cart, we have Clorox wipes. We have Depends. And I would not be surprised if there's clothing in here because we see Zach throw some clothing in there. Oh, my God. That was done for so quickly. because That go-back basket was done so quickly because in one scene, you have a whole cart full of stuff. And then you know, next scene, there you, go, you just have the tires in there. Like you have the, the disinfectant wipes, you have the pens, and there's a bunch of other stuff too that we can hardly see. So I don't really know exactly. Wouldn't be surprised if there's like similar baby formula in there or what. Their job is to put all these uh, merchandise back on the floor exactly where they go, and in a decent fashion too. So they put all the gold backs back. There's a clips. Then running back and forth between, you have all the employees that are running after them, and then left all that's left is the tire. And you also have Zach and Vince, they're basically fighting with each other, Vince being more hostile than before, and saying, Surrender, box boy! Surrender, box boy! Zach grabs the tire out of the shopping cart, switches it out for a replacement with the barcode, and he grabs Vince's basket to go back to the sales floor, but not so fast. We see Dirk on an electric shopping cart, posing as an old lady. Here is the final curveball. Okay. Old lady in need of assistance. Bunion pads, please. She's in need of some bunion pads. They both go running for the bunion pads. So Vince goes climbing up on the steel, which, according to Sam's Club policy, is prohibited. Zach winds up grabbing, uh, he goes into the box of Pennzoil oil that is on the sales floor. He throws it up in steel, and he winds up grabbing... Uh, so now, here's the thing about the bunion pads. The bunion pads are not... They're not properly wrapped around like they should be. Okay? No, 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 no. This, that's a huge no-no. Okay? Because in order to get it safely up in steel and back down again... Like, that stuff's going to fall all over the place. And the fact it's just sitting up there, you're asking for trouble. Zach winds up throwing that Penzoil oil all the way up to the top of steel where the bunion pads are. One of the bunion pads falls off and falls into Zach's hands while the motor oil slips and falls onto Zach. He's sitting there a little unnoxious. He jumps out of steel all the way down to the floor, which is like a... It's got to be like a two, three-story drop, okay? And when you have con when you have a concrete floor setting, that is a huge no-no. All right, you risk getting yourself, you risk like broken legs or something by this point. All right, 
This is why they do not allow you to jump up and steal like that. Well, that was a huge no-no. But anyway, um, Zach grabs the bunny pants to the lady, and he winds up grabbing the tire, and he starts heading back to the sales floor. There's a cart return in the middle of the sales floor, or cart storage, that is. Parks his shopping cart in the cart storage while he races back to the register with the tire. And while Zach has the tire in his arm, racing back to the register, Vince takes that tire, and he winds up sweet. He winds up rolling it down the racetrack, just like a bowling ball would down the bowling alley. And it winds up going in a straight location. It, Jorge winds up... You get about... Zach's still about 10 feet away from the register when Jorge gets his hands on Vince's tire. He grabs... They both get on the register, but Jorge's got the hand scanner right then and there, scans the tire, and narrowly beats Zack. I mean, and then, basically, Vince narrowly beats Zack for the competition. Jerry the door greeter. Okay, so like what we have here. Manager Glenn is sitting there. The employee of the month is going to go to Vince Downey. You have Lil... You have, Lily from HR, you have Jerry the door greeter who are sitting there upset. Amy's also upset too. Vince, he's basically up on the register, holding the tire up in his hands, like he's just like he's holding a trophy. Yeah! And then he winds up jumping off the register. Meanwhile, you have Lon, Iqbal, and Russell. They're trying to console. Zach saying, you did a good job. You tried your best. Zach sitting there saying, it's not enough. I blew it. He walks away upset. Amy, being upset about Vince winning, looks over at Zach. Like he, she, know, she feels Zach's pain. Meanwhile, you have Semi, the security guard. He notices he, something... You know, something's fishy here. So, so he goes back to the his, he goes back to his office, where the surveillance competition was actually recorded on surveillance tape. Goes back to watch surveillance tape, and he finds something quite interesting. Okay, he's sitting there watching the tape, and while he's sitting there watching the tape, we wind up uh, ha they have the official banquet. Okay, everybody's sitting there having a meal or I don't, I'm not sure exactly what they're eating or something, but basically they get up on stage. You have Corporate Glenn, you have Manager Glenn, and you have Dirk. They're all up on stage along with Vince and Zach. They're all sitting in chairs. Okay, you have Corporate Glenn and Manager Glenn. They're up on the, they're up at the podium. Ladies and gentlemen. Nobody in Super Club's history has won Employee of the Month 18 months in a row, but tonight someone has. So before they award the winner, they decide to head into the complaint box. There's a big complaint suggestion box that is usually held in Semi's office, but it's brought up just to confirm that there are no complaints. Oh wait, there's something in the box. Super Club blows. <laughs> that was a close one. So, they decide to award Employee of the Month and the keys to the Chevy Malibu to Vince Downey. The balloons come down. Most people are applauding, but some people aren't. Vince winds up getting up on stage. He makes one of the most cocky acceptance speeches I've ever heard, kissing up the management and sucking up to the team. Meanwhile, you have... Zach's friends are on this. They're, they're sitting there at the table saying, what a smart ass. What a smart ass. Okay. And meanwhile, he sits there and takes a stab at Zach. And Zach, you made a race. Thank you. But I won. And right in the middle of this speech, Semi approaches with a VHS cassette, which, yes, was still a thing. Back in 2006, when this was being filmed. Excuse me, sir. I think you should take a look at this. It's surveillance video of the competition. He winds up getting up to the podium, which 
Murat somehow has a VCR inside the podium and is somehow connected to the TV monitors that are up on the stage. All right. Pops it in with a TV remote and everything. Shows. Okay. So basically because Vince likes to be a conceited asshole. He decides, okay, semi decides, well, that's see how you like when I make an ass out of you in front of the Hulk. You like to make an ass, you like to be conceited in front of everybody. Well, that's see how you like it when I make an ass out of yourself in front of the whole club. Pops open the surveillance tape, and basically, you have like you know, Zach is basically scanning stuff up, and then he winds up taking this can of oatmeal. All right, instead of running through the it was scanning through the register, he takes it and he throws it behind him towards Jorge. All right. Okay. I'll watch. I'll, sir, I'll rewind it again. But this time, watch the oats. Because it's a little bit slower. All right. And then people are starting to catch on. He rewinds it again in even slower motion. Watch the oats. Okay. The oats never actually made it through the scanner. It actually, Vince took the oats. Threw it behind him, never got scanned up and wind up in the basket. And you know what Vince's defense on this is? He tampered with it. Clearly, I mean Zach um, bribed the return. Okay, he's basically even went as far as accusing Zach of bribing Semi to tamper with the surveillance footage. But it's no joke. Am I seeing this right? You see, sir, he didn't run it up. Not only did he cheat during the competition, he even gave me free stuff all year long. You see, I got the tapes to prove it, sir. So basically what this means is he cheated. Not everything got run up properly. Plus, he also had a whole stack of videotapes in his office with, uh, with other occasions where he wound up giving away. He wound up... Um, not scanning the merchandise and giving away for free throughout the whole year. Okay? Dirk confirms these allegations. The semi's arguments are true, or at least the ones for the competition. Because Dirk runs over to the two registers that Zach and Vince were running off of and pops up the receipt for both of them. One receipt is longer than the other. Okay? He's right. These are from the registers. Same cards, same amount of items, different totals. Vince Downey. And then Semi screams, you're the fastest, all right. Fastest criminal in the Southwest. Vince is a, Vince realizes that he has been busted. He decides to take a he decides to make a run for it. Nope. Semi winds up. Um semi winds up toppling. Vince doesn't even make it like two feet away before Semi topples him like a football player does on the football field. And Semi is all over, is right on top of Vince. All right. Now, we're going to go back to a specific quote. All right. So, uh, let's see. In the early part of the movie, one thing we forgot during the introduction, okay? One of the lines, okay, Vince and Semi, they run into each other. Vince asks Semi, is your name Semi because you're the size of a huge man truck or because you're semi retarded? Okay? And Semi doesn't really have an answer. But once Semi is all over Vince at the end of the movie, he says, That's why you call it that's why they call you Semi. Because Semi is the size of a Mack truck. He's not a retard, even though he may look like one. Okay? Manager Glenn screams to Vince, Vince Downey, you are a disgrace to me into the super club chain. I am not proud of you. Get that scum out of here before I kick his ass myself. Semi grabs Vince by his belt and basically kicks. He basically escorts Vince out the door. All right? Glenn and Dirk, they wind up having a conversation. 
okay, now that our employee of the month is no longer employed, who do we give the honors to? But there's a clear consensus, and Glenn gets up and says, ladies and gentlemen, it looks like the employee of the month is going to go to the runner-up, Zach Bradley. Okay? Which is welcomed by the whole, everybody else. Okay? Everybody is welcome to that idea. And you have Zach's friends. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Zach walks up to Amy, and they basically have made peace with each other. And then Zach winds up asking, so does this mean you only go after the employee of the month? Well, I have to find out. You have to wait till next month, I guess. And then they wind up dancing to shine on, shine on. I don't know what the song is, so let's take a look. Um, so I think it's... It is Bo, right? Okay. There is another one here. Let's take a look. There's a soundtrack right here. So we have, and we'll go through a lot of these other songs too, but basically Shine On is performed by Need to Breathe. All right. Written by Bo Reinhardt and Bear Reinhardt. Okay. The song, the band Need to Breathe is the one behind this um, song. And then about, and then we go to the final scene of the movie, which is set six weeks later. Okay. So six weeks have passed. We're in the Super Club parking lot. You have Vince and Jorge. They're sitting in Jorge's car. Sitting, they're sitting there listening to the song. I Want to Kiss You All Over by Exile. Okay? I love this song. Okay? Jorge looks down under um, Z Vince's ankle. He notices that there is a little device on his ankle. There is a house arrest. There's one of those little device, electronic devices on his ankle. All right? So here's basically what has happened. After he was so, so after Vince got fired from Super Club, he wound up taking a job over at rival Maxi Mart. Okay. In addition to that, he was also put on house arrest. He is not allowed more than a mile from home and or work. Okay. This must mean Super Club, Maxi Mart, and his house are all within a mile of each other. Otherwise, I don't see how Vince would be, he would not be electronically shocked. So, going back to the conversation that the guys had, like, that um, Russell and Lon were having at the, at the birthday party about you, them having to put that electronic device on you at MaxiMart so they know where you are at all times. Jorge asks about that. So MaxiMart makes you wear those, bro? No. Jorge, I'm on probation. I'm on house arrest. Okay? And he's like on probation or house arrest. He's not allowed more than a mile away from home and or work. It's cool, though. I'm out. You, I really love the wheels, dude. He wants to take the car for a spin. Or he's not willing to do it. No. How about a ride home? No. How about a ride to the bus station? Absolutely. And you know why Jorge agrees to take Vince to the bus station? He knows the bus station is out of his range. And knowing how big... How much Vince was an asshole to Jorge when they worked when he worked at Super Club. Jorge was willing to do the same. Th Jorge was willing to find a way to get back at Vince for all the pathetic ways he treated him at the Super Club. Okay, so basically his way of payback: drive him over to the bus station, where as they're about to get out of that range, he gets electrocuted. You, you got to turn around. I'm about. I'm out of my range. Ah! Okay, 
Then we wind up um, finishing with the ending credits. With we're listening to the background of it's Cobra style. Uh, we're listening to Cobra style by the t Cobra styles by Teddy Bears, featuring Mad Cobra. Okay. And you have like, up on the little screen, like the little monitor that usually reads like the items that are being scanned. As soon as as every item is being scanned to the register, instead of it showing the item being scanned, it'll show like a different part of the credit. Dane Shepard, I mean, Dax Shepard, Dane Smith, Jessica Simpson, yada yada, employee of the month, written by yada yada yada, and stuff like that. And then once that song comes to an end, we go to the closing credits where we're listening to a Spanish version of I Want to Kiss You All Over. As well as surrender, uh, not by cheap trick, but Camp Freddy. All right. So that's the end of the film. So let's take a look at uh, some of the. So why don't we uh, quickly go through some of the qu quick trivia facts about this film before I go into my official review. Okay, of this movie and give you my official score. Okay, so top to, to start things off, this movie was written to be filmed in the Sam's Club. Okay, however, when Sam's Club was presented with the script, they were not too happy with it and they passed on it. Costco was then presented with it and they gave the automatic thumbs up. And as a result, they wanted a film in this around like a 30-day range at a Costco in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Okay? So let's uh, go through the trivia. So, the store, the store which this film is uh, filmed in is a Costco along Coors Bypass Northwest in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Okay? So basically, um, like I said before, Sam's Club was... Was first given this film, they didn't like it. Costco more than happy to jump on it, okay? Because now, because you this was shown in Costco, that technically the film was supposed to be like a neutral, uh, supposed to have like a neutral environment, but because it was filmed in a Costco, some of the Costco references or, or Costco images are being shown throughout the film, the food court. Being one of them, those red headlines above, like the fresh departments and the pharmacy area, those are also visible as well. Also, you have um, like the Kirkland brand. Okay, now we don't know what the generic brand for Super Club is, but Costco and Sam's Club each have their own generic brands. Like Sam's Club has Members Mark. While Costco has Kirkland. Okay. Okay. So, Dax Shepard and Dane Cook. Now, basically, the, um, they, they look very much like each other. And the movie execs were so afraid that they would resemble each other way too much. Dax Shepard, who plays Vince Downey, he was told to go. He was asked to be blonde in this movie, which he apparently agreed to. Okay. Ava Longora appears as a super club employee named Lily in a scene filmed as an alternative opening deleted from the theatrical release. This scene is found in the super features section of the DVD. So basically, this alternative opening is basically you have Dane Cook and Dax Shepard who play Vince and Zach, they're going through orientation together. They're watching this orientation video, which is being narrated by John O'Hurley, who has a wide resume of his own. He has, he played Elaine's boss, Mr. Peterman, in the later seasons of Seinfeld, 7, 8, and 9 to be exact. He also did a couple of game shows including Family Feud and To Tell the Truth in the early to late 2000s. He also has hosted 
or at the very least co-starred in Dancing of the Stars, I mean, Dancing with the Stars, to be exact. Okay, he uh, has an uncredited role as the narrator. As he makes an appearance, doesn't tell him who he is, but he basically uh, stars in the orientation video for Employee of the Month. Okay. Dane Cook would later wear his Super Club hat in Good Luck Chuck, which was made in 2007. Even though all the signage is removed from the store for being a Costco, Costco's brand Kirkland is still seen on some of the products and signs. Okay? Dane Cook is a diehard Boston Red Sox fan. In the movie when Super Club is playing Maxi Mart in the baseball game, Super Club is in red in honor of the Red Sox, while Maxi Mart is in gray and blue in honor of the Yankees. This is a play of their famous rivalry. Okay? Other rivalries, like probably the fierce, fiercest rivalry in Major League Baseball is the Red Sox and Yankees. And when you compare that to other rivalries in other sports, including Celtics versus Lakers in the NBA, particularly because of their the shitload of appearances that these two have played against each other in the NBA Finals. You also have the Boston Boston Bruins versus Montreal Canadiens, as well as the Toronto Maple Leafs versus Montreal Canadiens in the National Hockey League, probably the two fiercest rivalries in the NHL. NFL, I'd probably say one of the fiercest would be the Baltimore Ravens versus the Pittsburgh Steelers, as well as Pittsburgh versus Cleveland. Okay. You also have Green Bay versus Minnesota, Green Bay versus Chicago, Green Bay versus Detroit. Okay, well, Let's get back to this scene, shall we? In the Steak Smith scene, Harlan Williams says that Dane Cook is just like the drummer from Ario Speedwagon, while their song Can't Stop This Feeling plays in the background. After Zach makes fun of Vince when he asks if Amy's last name is Nordic, Vince says, Oh, he's quick with a joke, or to light up your smoke. It's a famous line from Billy Joe's song, Piano Man. At one point, after Zach tells Vince he has a date with Amy, Vince tells Vince gives the Sufi, Superfinger, a hand gesture, which happens to be Dane Cook's signature sign for his stand-up. All of the drink products shown are Coke products, except the Sobe drinks that Vin, which uh, Vince consumes. Sobe was bought by Pepsi in 2000, and Costco switched from all Coke products to all Pepsi in 2013. Sam's Club, on the other hand, they sell both Coke and Pepsi. Okay? Vince yells, this is an 81 Honda. How dare you? Car aficionados say that Vince's car was actually 82 to 83 Honda Civic based on the grill, headlights, and other small interior features. The movie Zach and Amy watch on their date inside Super Club is The Prince's Bride. Employee of the Month and the movie Waiting both share the same universe. I have I wound up watching the movie Waiting when I was in college. I was a staff when I was a desk assistant over at the U of A. University of Arizona, we wind up going over our desk manager's apartment. They wind up showing us waiting. Pretty interesting. That was a pretty fun movie, might I add. Or very interesting, to say the very least. Store's manager's name was named Glenn Gary. His brother, corporate supervisor, was named Glenn Ross. A reference to Glenn Gary Glenn Ross from 1992. The reference is furthered when the HR lady lies about Dane Cook's resignation notice still being in the office and not having been sent to corporate. If Vince really had been given away free stuff as shown in the movie, it makes his ringing speed even more impressive, as items not scanned through the register do not count towards a cashier's items per minute. Also, it is interesting how the store disqualifies employees over a customer complaint, not but not for grand theft, which would have been easy to prove with store videos, fingerprinting, and records checking. When Iqbal is fired, they said it was because there was a mad rush in power strips when he was at Mughal's soccer game. 
But Iqbal had asked Zach to cover for him so he can go to Mikhail's championship game. Jessica Simpson had appeared in the Dukes of Hazard, 2005. Harlan William also appeared in the Dukes of Hazard, the beginning from 2007. On the wall in his house, Zach has a poster for the Meldons. Okay. On the Employee of the Month calendar, only Vince and Zach get stars, but at the end of the month, they both have 15, showing that they had both worked at least 15 days. Now, this is based, there's one thing clearly evident about this movie. These guys no, never get a day off of work, all right? If they had, all right, it would have made things a lot more interesting, okay? Do Vince and Zach both get the same days off of work? Do they, um, okay? That's another thing, too. Like, very crazy how these two, how nobody gets a day off of work at Super Club, okay? Meanwhile, at Walmart and Sam's Club, to say the very least, you are required to have at least two days off. Okay, full timers get two days. Part timers, they can schedule however they want, as long as it's within the. Okay, they can schedule. They can schedule you one or two days a week. They can schedule you five days a week. But what if they if they were to schedule you more than thirty four hours a week, they have to do it sparingly, or they would have to make you full time. Okay. So there's a couple of things I would say about that, okay? Another thing that I would like to point up, okay, so why don't we jump into our review for this movie, okay? So basically, um, this movie does paint a very good picture of what it's like to work in retail, particularly a warehouse club. If I was to recommend a movie to someone, like, if there is a movie, if someone were to ask me, if there is a movie out there that resembled the line of work you do, what would be the one movie that would best describe your working environment? It would be this one right here. All right. That's why I, that's why I find it funny. That's why I like it. That's why I like the movie. That's why I find it interesting. That's why I find it entertaining. Okay, even though, even though it is kind of hard to get to recognize some of the cast members, is uh, overall it's a very um, interesting film to go through. Okay, now yes, okay. One thing I do like to mention: Super Club does not work entirely the same capacity. Um. As like Sam's Club or Costco, all right. At least from a Walmart Costco, Walmart Sam's Club perspective, okay. You you would you do have a club, you do have a store manager, okay. But then you would have like assistant managers for each. You would probably have at least six assistant, five or six assistant managers, at least one for each department, okay. Within the last few years, Sam's Club, they reconfigured everything. It's like, you know, it used to be like you had different areas. Like, you had a front end, you had membership marketing, you had grocery, you had hard lines, you had overnights, you had fresh, and you even had asset protection. And there would be one manager for each of those particular areas. But in the last few years, they have reconfigured themselves to basically... Um, we're going to have one or two managers on the front end. We're going to have two managers for merchandising, and we're going to have two managers for fresh. Especially since we do not we do not have an overnight shift anymore. Okay. So like, there's a, a little bit of there are some similarities and there are some differences. But um, since it is a movie, I am willing to let it bypass. Okay. Um. The the handling of Amy's personnel file, you would not be allowed to do anything. That is a huge no no in the real world. No no. Okay. Personnel files are supposed to be confidential, and they're supposed to remain discreet, and they're supposed to remain in lockup in the HR office at all times. All right. Only to be viewed. 
when extremely necessary, not to be viewed to go snooping into uh, to go snooping around other people's businesses. Okay, no, 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 no. no. Okay, the ladders you see, like the, that one, that that one employee you saw up in the ladder grabbing the paper products out of steel. That's a no-no for a warehouse. You have to use a forklift. All right. Same with like climbing up in the steel to grab the bunion pads for that curveball in the check stand rain off. You have you need steel, right? The bunion pads were not properly wrapped. Plus, you need a forklift. No, you do not climb up on stuff. And it's for safety. All right. I don't know how Vince survived that drop. From up, from upper steel down to the concrete floor. All right. So, those are a couple of things I like to point out. But other than that, it's pretty much it does make a lot of it does hit the ball. Hit the ball. Okay. So now, so now for my overall rating. Okay, and believe me, we're almost done. So for those of you who have never seen one of my reviews before, we go on a scale of one through five. We do this. Thing. We view our s stuff the same way the Married Children podcast reviews the episodes of Married Children. All right. Five is a Hall of Fame. One is extremely bad. All right. One is extreme. One is really hated it. Two is didn't like it, but it's still watchable. Three, I liked it. Slash, it's okay. Four, I really liked it. Five, loved it. Slash, Hall of Fame. In order to get a Hall of Fame score, like the one big question you have to ask is, if you are showing somebody, like let's take an example, let's let's take Mary Chun for example. If I was to show somebody, if I was to take somebody who had never watched Mary Chun before and introduce them to an episode. And showed them an episode of Mary with Children. Like, what would what, what be um, the kind of... Would this be an episode that I would be willing to show somebody who had never seen Mary Children before? And get and they would basically describe exactly what the show is all about. Okay? Only a few episodes can have that mark. Alright? So, and coincidentally... This film, like, if someone were to ask me, like, what would be, what would be the one film that would best describe your working environment? And my answer would be Employee of the Month. So that for that reason, Employee of the Month is going to get a 5 out of 5. Okay? So that is all we have for today. And I will be back in the future for another movie review. Hopefully a lot simpler than what you just watched. And check out, we have more reviews coming up for Married Children and Seinfeld. We have food and beverage reviews coming up too. They're also working on home improvement reviews as well. So be on the lookout for that. And also be on the lookout for a few other movies. If there is a particular movie you would like me to take a look at, please let me know in the comment section below. And I will see what I can do to make it happen. Okay? Till the next time we meet, Mr. Wildcat, reminding each and every one of you to be good, be careful, and behave, and stay safe. Because buying bulk is your God-given right. <laughs>